Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of Rob Unscripted. I am Rob Cohey, Industry Solution Evangelist for Autodesk Manufacturing. Today's episode is Autodesk Inventor Stress Analysis and my campaign to stop WAG Engineering. WAG, a.k.a. Wild Ass Guesses. Those of you who are laughing right now know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, I'm not real sure that this is going to hold up, so instead of going with 3 sixteenths, let's just go with a quarter and call it good. Well, there are some tools built directly within Autodesk Inventor. You've heard me say it over and over and over again. Inventor is an engineering tool, more so than it is a CAD geometry creation tool. So let's take a look at an example that I found on the manufacturing community site that uh, kind of walks us through a little bit how we can use stress analysis to better inform our design. So I've moved into the stress analysis tool set within Inventor Professional and I want to go ahead and take a look real quick at contacts. And contacts are really important uh, in order for us to understand how the, you know, the relationship between components and how they're meant to react to each other. You see we have bonded, separation, uh, separation with no sliding, shrink fit, no sliding. Uh, and um, here on this, uh, I'm going to call it a glue gun just, just to be on the safe side of things. <laughs> so here we've got uh, sliding no separation uh, as we talk about uh, the, the contacts and we, we've got a, a spring set up here too and let's let's real quick take a look at that one and, and see what we can control here uh, with this particular contact so take a look at it the spring type uh, what the stiffness is and, and all those other types of things I can put into this uh, mechanism I've also got a place where I control the loads where's the force on the trigger what is the force going to be applied um, I've got it on the handle, the plunger head, and the force on the ring. So a couple other things then. We have, uh, of course, the meshing tools and such, and, and I can take a look at, at how that was was solved by switching to the mesh view. Um, and you know, then we can see uh, the number of nodes and the number of elements in this particular assembly. Now, so I've informed Inventor on all of the things that it needs to go ahead and run a calculation for me, or a simulation for me rather, and uh, provide all the stresses. But beforehand, I get some, hey, you can't simulate that until all the materials uh, are, are in line with everything. So here I'll go in and change my ring back to the uh, the default. So, all right, now I'm ready to go ahead and, uh, and run my simulation. So I'll hit run, and we'll edit the video. <laughs> See? I, I don't hide anything from you guys. I tell you when I edit the videos out, shorten up a little bit. You don't want to watch my computer chunking on anything. So here we go. Uh, here's my results. And all in all, everything looks pretty good uh, initially. And I take and animate the results. And we can actually see this mechanism working under the loads. And, uh, you know, given the contacts and, and, uh, and such that we've put into this particular design. Now, I do these glue guns. Uh, a lot. I'm a glue gun manufacturer and I know that this pin is typically a uh, uh, a point in which we have uh, you know a lot of failures in the past what have you and I want to make sure that uh, you know our new uh, glue gun is going to hit the market and it's going to work and uh, you know I'm no botanist here but uh, you know as I understand it if you put uh, Brondo on plants it won't grow just the same as if you see red during a uh, simulation that's a bad thing so if any of you caught on to what movie that is, it's one of my favorite movies, you check it out. Uh, prize of, uh, of you being my good favor uh, for the first person that, uh, that figures that out. So I've got my stress analysis done here. I see that red is bad. So now I'm going to go through and figure out how I'm going to approach the information, solve this particular design challenge that's now been presented to me. Um, I, I've, I've passed uh, the uh, uh, the yield strength um, that uh, that this particular piece of steel uh, is going to be able to handle. So I'm going to increase the diameter of this. Hey, what, what better way to attack it, right? <laughs> just uh, hey, if it doesn't work, just just add some material to it. So that's what I'm going to do here. Um, but before I do so, I, I will take this take a look at this little tip here. Um, you saw that I was editing a dimension and my ability to go and choose the option to view dimensions. Uh, from other features allows me to link to those parameters. So pretty handy little tip there too. Uh, I use that quite a bit. So I'll, uh, I'll fix my design, uh, change it to three and a half millimeters uh, versus three millimeters, and I'll go back over it into my simulation environment and run my simulation and see what the results are now based upon the new uh, diameter of that pin. 
So I'll run it and see where we get here. Go ahead and isolate my pin. And let's take a look at, uh, at what we got. And sure enough, uh, 1 point not, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 179.5 is less than the 207 uh, value that I need. So I am good to go here. So again, as I mentioned before, I'm no botanist, uh, nor am I uh, a uh, structural engineer. So what if I want to go ahead and pass this information off to somebody in the form of a report so they can make a fully informed decision on uh, the the validity of this design. So I'll go ahead and hit report and tell it to go ahead and run all of the simulations and let's see what kind of results we get. We get a very very detailed HTML page that I can email to say my structural analysis guy, my uh, uh, you know the guy that knows uh, when he goes through and reads all of these forces and um, Young's modulus and and stresses ZX ZY and first principle stress when he takes a look at those um, you know he's he's fully informed he can and if I'm a designer he can validate my design so now the last time I simply I went in and I changed to 3.5 and, and and that's kind of, I mean, it's you're more informed, but it's still kind of a, a, a wag at that point. You know, you don't really know what is the optimum diameter based upon, you know, going from 3 millimeters, say, all the way up to 3.5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a parametric simulation here to have it set up all the different iterations, run the simulation, then tell me based upon uh, a couple of uh, design constraints, which one is the optimum size and then push that size down to the CAD model. So here I'm generating all, all different configurations. I've, I've, I've set up a parameter and now it's driving the different diameters uh, of those. But I also want to make sure that I'm, uh, I'm using the least amount of material possible but I still need to have the appropriate, um, the po the appropriate strength uh, to make sure that that pin is going to hold up. So I've ran the simulation and now I can go ahead and run through these uh, different design variables and I take a look at what 3.4 looks like, uh, the resultant value of my von Mises stress, and I want it to be minimal mass. Okay, so the, the smallest mass obviously is going to be 3.2 given the values that I've, that I've given it. And it can't exceed the yield strength of the material that I have selected for the pin. So let's have it optimized for me. What's the least amount of mass while staying under 207 uh, for my yield strength? And there we go. And then once I do that, I simply right click and say push that change down to my model. I take a look at what the parameters are. Pin diameter is now 3.4 millimeters. So I've taken information from my stress analysis and have it actually drive the design. I think that's pretty pretty informative. I got that information uh, from our uh, our manufacturing community. Um, that uh, that skill builder was up there. Take a peek up there, and there's there's tons of skill builders. There's great stuff if uh, if you if you're looking to learn and utilize some of that functionality. Uh, again, I'm Rob Cohey. I am the lyrical gangster. Word him up. <laughs>